Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back after an annoyingly long delay to Ashes of the Empire, and straight away into a battle. So to answer the question, where did this season suddenly vanish to? There was a series of problems with the Ashes of the Empire campaign when the Halloween update hit. A lot of the Steel Empire vehicles kind of reverted back to previous designs and previous versions, a lot of them without detection equipment, which really, really messed them up. I actually recorded half an episode before realising that happened. So then I went on to retrofit our Angron, now with an EMP version of its previous particle cannon, using a single tube build rather than using several tubes firing several particles every time it fires. And honestly, it was one of the most boring episodes I had ever recorded and there was no way I was going to make that interesting. So I decided to just leave it be and as soon as the game got fixed we would go back and do a battle straight away. So here we are, essentially one episode late. So hopefully you can all forgive that and let's get straight into this fight. Greetings from the future. I am recording this straight after recording this video. Now I'd like to say, during this video, the game crashes about seven times. I ignore them and don't really mention the crashes, but it does come across as the video looking a little bit rushed because of the amount of time of me trying to fix the game. Now thankfully, I have figured out the exact problem so the game has stopped crashing completely and the next video will be out far sooner than this video was out. Out. So hopefully by the end of the weekend there will be a second Ashes of the Empire upload. So I do apologise if the video seems a little bit segmented, but I did run into a lot of problems. I tried not to mention it, but it does come across as being fairly obvious. Either way, enjoy, we get into a lot of battles, and we get to test out and see a few problems with the tanks. Before I forget though, let's have a quick look-see at what we are even fighting. We are fighting the fog, the bear, and another bear. We have two more fogs, and we have something else there just next to the bear, which is a brush cutter. Now I'm really hoping the Angron is going to do well, because I am desperate to make a particle cannon tank a regular tank, a tank we can keep on using. So the EMP, which is currently attached to the Angron should be okay. I'm really hoping it's okay. It has quite a fast fire rate with less of a damaging effect, but if it hits enough, I am somewhat confident in that it will knock out AIs depending on how the enemy have been built. So let's just see how it goes, shall we? Let's pause time for a second, make sure I'm not holding on to the weapon. And let's make sure everyone's in combat. Fantastic. And here are the enemies spawning in really close to each other. This may be a bit of an issue for them, which of course will be to our benefit. Okay, the Angron has hit a target. Let's see what it does. Not as much as I would hope. Honestly, that number of EMP damage was incredibly low, so that got stopped long before it could do the full effect. The second EMP has hit, however. It's still going. In fact, it's done a lot of damage. 9.5 thousand EMP damage has now been done, and we have hit another target. Although now I'm thinking perhaps we shouldn't have spawned the Angron in so ridiculously close. Look at how many missiles are there. That is honestly terrifying. Not really showcasing the Angron too much here because of how much is going on. It has turned off a lot of the enemy's guns, so it has functioned, though I think we will need more tests to really tell the effect. No AI dead yet, though, so perhaps this may be a waste. Oh, that is almost in the way of those missiles, one of them detonating on the back. The bear has been defeated, the cultist is happily just taking pot shots at the enemy, and of course, as always, the Shriven is hitting the Angron. Everything is hitting the Angron, and we've just stolen a vehicle. Ooh, AI dead, AI dead, we stole that. I don't know if that was from the Angron, it may have been. Did that just say battle finished and then more enemies spawned in? What just happened there? We do have one enemy left. 
Now one thing I did find out in the video which ended up getting skipped is that the particle cannon is a little bit special in that it can completely go through the ground. The ground does not get in the way. There it goes, up into the air. So... Overall results from that, not too happy. One of our engines still overheating because, well, we've been over this before. At the moment, the Angron is an unfinished design, at least in terms of its internals. Let's have a quick look-see at the gun itself, and let's see if any changes should be made. So this is currently how the EMP is being set up. Let's just pause time. I said let's just pause. Oh wait, no, if I pause time I can't look at the gun. Never mind, let's look at the gun while we slowly go around and try to do repair work. So we have a single pipe this time. It is a pipe which actually has about 200 in length, but apparently it has taken some damage. And this is how we've set it up. It's mostly going for accuracy for accuracy over damage, so I think being so close was definitely a problem. And I'm starting to, to, to think that perhaps we need more damage than we have accuracy there. So let's change that to perhaps there, so it's going to be a bit more damaging but a bit less accurate, and leave everything else as it is? I mean, if we're going to be that close, maybe even changing that. Okay. I think that will be better. Oh yes, I've also done this. So, the Angron, which really needs to be renamed now because it is actually a name in the Corn lore, is also now worshipping the god of magic and fate and all that good stuff, Zinch. So yeah, really needs to be renamed. We do have an enemy about to fight us and the cultist isn't yet repaired. Let's see if we can do some repair work on that before we get into the fight. So what is the enemy here? We have an Orion, we have an Orion, we have a Hadron, we have the Gannet, and we have a small Shadow Cat. The thing is though, that looks really bad in terms of where they are. I think they might be over there on the marshes. What I am very tempted to do is make a hovercraft. Now the problem with a hovercraft, with such small volume, is it's probably going to rock around a lot. I've been told that the lightning hoods have almost only hovercraft, and although they work completely fine, they look a little bit silly. That's what I've been told. I've been trying to avoid looking at designs, so I can't confirm that, and that's just a bit of speculation. Also, the shortest lived rainstorm ever. Once again, the Angron will be going on the front. The Krulls will be at the back, just providing some fire support and, of course, refueling our ships as they go. The Cultist will be somewhere at the front on the other side. And the Shriven will be here, hopefully not shooting all of our allies. This is the problem when you have a mix of... Wow, that is really, really foggy. I was going to say, a mix of ranges in your group. Having long range and very short range, you are going to get crossfire because the game doesn't handle friendly fire well. You just can't set up an AI to understand if it is going to be able to hit a target without hitting its allies. It's just something that's not really implemented yet. So... That looks okay. I think I will leave it like this. Hopefully the Angron will be a little bit better. If it's not, we're just going to have to have a longer charge time and have it as a mid-range tank rather than being a brawler with a particle cannon. I'm not quite sure why I'm even doing this, honestly. Just... What is with the weather? Well, I've waited a while after being distracted by the weather, and apparently it's not going away. But this is the weirdest looking fog I've seen in this game so far. It's almost blindingly bright, so I may have to lower the brightness of a video. That's really, really weird for From the Depths. So let's just see how it does. Hopefully it will go okay. Let's hop onto the Angron, let's pause time for a second, and let's see how the enemy have lined up. Okay, so there's the Hadron, there's the Shadow Cat, which looks awesome, and honestly, I am very, very tempted to try and make something very similar to the Shadow Cat, because honestly, that's a really simple setup. I also love how they've done the dedicated Hellerblades here, in that they've simply inverted one on the top, and then that is technically connected, by the way. So, that's really cool. I like that they've incorporated a tiny tail wing section. It's cheap and really effective. The problem is, if I did go with this type of design, 
I would have to use missiles. It's just going to happen. That that's the reason why this one uses missiles, because an advanced cannon on this type of design just wouldn't be that good as a primary weapon. But I am very tempted, especially now we've got the Krulls supplying fuel, it means I can have very inefficient, very powerful engines. So I may be copying something like this for the very rocky terrain. Also, is that thing fly- no, it's just- no, yes it is flying, okay, sure, of course it is. Come on, Angron! Okay, the Angron has hit the Orion. And a fair bit of internal damage done. 15,000 EMP damage, and it is now AI dead. Fantastic indeed. That was okay. That was honestly more than powerful enough. It's now hitting the next target, which is now also AI dead. It's now going for the Hadron. I think. Can't see it firing right now. It can fire through the ground, as I was saying earlier. Ooh, the cultist just got took out again. What's going on with... Oh, are you trying to... Wow, you just got really, really hit. Okay, pause time for a second. So, the big weakness when it comes to the particle cannon is if the cannon itself takes damage, it can hurt itself because the shot will go through the broken pipe. So, if, if there's an opening in the pipe, it will literally kill itself. And I've got a horrible feeling it's trying to do that, although it could be trying to go for that target up there, which I haven't really allowed it to do. Yeah, that's not a good idea. We need to set up some constraints there. No, let me let me go for the gun. There we are. Where is the one I'm after? I'm after feel the fire, sure. And there we are, firing at itself because the pipe is damaged. Angron, turn off. Let everything else do their job. And also, the Shriven wasn't online. In oh, for the as soon as I turn the Shriven on, it hurts one one of our crawls. Of course it does. Why not? Why wouldn't it? Are you fully repaired yet? Uh, nope, soon as you are, I'll turn you back on. The enemy Hadron just sitting there. The Krull's missiles do very badly against flyers, I've noticed. The Krull desperately needs a massive retrofit. It's just not a good tank. It's a cool tank, and I love the concept of it, but... It, I think it needs to be a little bit less armoured and a bit more... in the realm of being able to do damage, because at the moment it's just kind of dead white. Okay. Angron, I believe in you. Please kill that shadow cat. You fired way too early, and that's why I had those settings low, so you wouldn't do that. Now going after the... Hadron. So it's not quite accurate enough to hit at this range with the settings we just gave it. Well, it did eventually hit it, and by the looks of it, it did take out the turret, which has classed it as two damage. So, a better performance this time. I think the main issue we have is that this group does not work well together. It just doesn't. This group does not function coherently, at cohesively, at all. They just... they kill each other. They kill each other, and they don't complement each other. They don't have a wide spectrum of things they can do, and they just end up either hurting each other or getting in the way, and there's so many things we need to do. So, let's get our large vehicle back to where it was, so pull all. Wait, have we just climbed this territory? No, we haven't. Okay, repair. You go back on there, though, and get me some resource. Incoming enemy. Yes, I would like to fight. Oh, Lord. Why did I up the settings? Okay, let's get this fight out of the way, so then so then we can hopefully defend this guy. Although we may have to sacrifice him for resource. Although I don't really want to do that, because we do have the giant vehicle over there as well. The enemy group is only made of flyers. Completely made out of flyers. We have a Reaper, we have two Shadowcats, three Shadowcats, and we have two Gannets. Now hopefully... For some reason, these have spawned really close to the ground, so hopefully they may just about clip. We'll see. Go. No, they didn't. The Angron just fired, and I think it hit the Gannet. I cannot see what's going on now, because it's so heavily raining. Well, that's great. 
The Angron is also not accurate enough to deal with this, so let's change that in a second. Hi there, could you please be more accurate? Okay, two enemies are currently too damaged. What just happened? One of them will likely be the cultist, because, well, the cultist was already low on health. But no, we have killed one of the gannets. And was that it? Was that the only two damaged? The other one must have already disappeared. That very well could have been the cultist. No, the cultist is still here. Let's turn the shriven back on. The shriven's okay, actually. At anti-air, the shriven is pretty good. What's going on with the... This thing, the Reaper. No sure who that- Oh, was that the cultist it was trying to bomb? I'm really not too sure. Uh-oh. Why did we bring that in? We accidentally brought in the large vehicle. That was not meant to happen. Behold the power of lasers! Thank you, Shriven. The Angron trying to take out that flyer and doing a very bad job. Upping its vertical power would actually be very helpful here, so let's just, for one second, do... Where are you? Vertical focus is at times one. There we are. Oh, it's already AI'd it. Perhaps it hit it, perhaps it didn't. I'm not too sure. That actually went pretty well. That went far better than expected. Well done, guys. You all deserve a medal. Especially to the cultist, who, who apparently distracted them for quite a while. Start repairing and move over. Hopefully we can bring it into the flatland. Why did I do that? No, cancel battle, allow the repair to finish. Okay, the repair did finish, although I didn't check, so... What are we against? We are against a Hexer. A... Oh, haven't actually seen one of those for a while. A Brush Cutter, a Brush Cutter, a Bear, and a Kingfisher. Now, it's raining again because the weather is being bizarre. How are they spawning in? Here's a few bits of metal. Uh, they're spawning in pretty well, actually. Quite f quite on the flatland. The Hexer, though, may have trouble shooting, which is fine by me. So what I should do is put the Shriven, if I can find the darn thing, over to here. The Angron can go here because it can fire through the ground, so that'll have no issue whatsoever. The Krull's at the back, as always, and then the Cultist at the front, as always, to act as its glue. As its glorious distraction. Speaking today, a little bit difficult, gotta be honest. The battle has started. Now, sadly, zoning in took quite a while then, so the battle has been going on for a fair few seconds. So, the enemy bear has taken quite a lot of damage. The cultist, as always, has been knocked out. It's quite weird, but the cultist seems to do the best when there's a lot of them. They really do work well together, even though they do kill each other, because they're so cheap. There's all of the cruel shots, which is actually a good indicator to how long the battle has been going on for, and that enemy there is doing a lot of damage to one of our Krulls. The Shriven isn't really doing its job very well, so let's continue and see how the Angron can do. We're still trying to test that out above all else. We just hit that target there, doing practically nothing. The Krull's missiles doing fantastically, as always. Two damage there, we've killed one of the bears. Okay, first hit did some massive damage to the turret, second hit did some internal damage, third and fourth hit did very little. Very, very little. One AI dead enemy at the back there, I think that's the Hexer. The Cult is there taking a fair few hits to the side and losing its turret. AI dead from that enemy, with only one enemy now remaining, the missiles causing it to detonate internally. Okay. Despite all the problems our forces have, they are definitely doing well against the Steel Empire at the moment. Cylinders overheated. Okay. I think... At this point, we need to really look at our tanks and consider the future of them, because they've definitely been doing well up to now, but their problems are becoming really apparent. So much so, I don't understand how I'm going to keep on using them. So let's have a quick look-see at them and think about it, have a bit of a brainstorming session. So with the Angron, 
I like how the EMP is acting, however, for its effectiveness, it's just too expensive. Both fuel-wise and for the actual hull itself, the Angron is not a good tank right now. I think I should convert it back to using a, an advanced cannon, use it as a mid-range bruiser, as it was meant to be in the first place, and put all of that engine power back into its shields, making it very, very hard to kill with standard means. I do think that the Particle Cannon version has a lot of potential, but I think it should have a much cheaper hull because it's going to kill itself a lot, purely because of how the piping system works, even if we do add a lot of heavy armour, because of the volume constriction, it's just not going to happen very effectively, so a good future for the Particle Cannon, but I don't think on the Angron hull. The Krull is hard to kill. It is hard to kill, we've seen it even in this episode, it's, it's took lasers to the face from its allies, it's took missiles, and it's been hard to kill, but I think its firepower is lacking, even though the missiles are very effective, so I think, again, sacrificing a bit of metal so I can add some more missiles and some more ammunition so it can keep on firing might be a good way to do that. The Shriven works, actually, for its cost, it's quite, it's the cheapest of our heavy tanks, by a long shot, in fact, it's 27,000 resource, the rest are 35,000 plus. It's ugly as sin, it is, I'm not going to lie there, it's a very ugly tank. It's got a very odd looking turret cap because of how the laser has ended. It's got a very odd, very flat bed of a hull, which I'm not very happy with, but it does its job well, it doesn't play nice with other tanks. So I think it will have to go in a group with flyers or with Krull and nothing else. So I think the Shriven will be the only one not edited. The Cultist as well does absolutely fine. There's nothing I really want to do with the Cultist other than perhaps making its movement a little bit more reliable. So now, finally, let's move everything... Well, I was just cut off then by the fact that the game just crashed, so I do apologise for that. And what I think I'll do is call the episode there, just consider it a nice little mini-episode of pure battles, and I will instantly start work on the next episode. So like I was saying earlier, I have actually cut a video because of all the problems, so sorry if this one seemed a little bit rushed, because honestly, it simply was. And my voice kept breaking during it as well, so I'm going to go back into the campaign now, get back to where we was because probably I just lost a little bit of our save progress and then next episode we will start working on the tanks perhaps working on the hover tank depending on how much time I have because honestly that's going to take a long time and then we can push back against the steel empire so that was a nice fast battling episode I hope you have enjoyed the next episode will be out very soon especially in comparison to how long it took for this episode to come out so thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.